to generate this uh, kind of index of refraction. So then, uh, because we are going to talk about uh, thermodynamics and stuff, the, our theoreticians, our collaborators, are always ask for a Hamiltonian. Then we have a Hamiltonian. This is the uh, quantum harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian. But it's expressed in terms of the uh, circular, uh, the number of circular quanta. This is right circular and left circular because we are going to talk about the Laguerre Gaussian modes, which are uh, the, the solutions of the two-dimensional uh, harmonic oscillator uh, in terms of the circular quantum. And then we can have the energies uh, given in terms of the orbital angular momentum and the radial number p. And if, if we have uh, p equal to zero, it's possible. You see that uh, there's a family of modes in which uh, p is zero. When p is different from zero, you have these rings, uh, these external rings here. When p is equal to zero, you have only one uh, ring, one look like a donut. And uh, then the energy is uh, directly proportional to the orbital angular moment in this uh, analogy. So what, what does it mean having a, a position-dependent index of refraction? So I made a kind of equivalence. If, if you are interested in this issue, it's, uh, this, this is the book by Light Transmission Optics by Dietrich Marcuse. This guy in, in the 70s and 80s, he studied uh, waveguides. Because in fact, if you have this kind of um, uh, dependence in the index of refraction, you have a waveguide. And, uh, and this is the, the optical fiber. The optical fiber is a waveguide which is equivalent to a square potential. But uh, notice that it's inverted. Because uh, in the core of a, uh, an optical fiber, the index is bigger side. That's why you have a total internal reflection. And uh, if, uh, if you want to have a square law media, uh, then you need to have an index of refraction which looks more or less like this. You notice that, of course, uh, you, you at, some, at some point you, you need to have some truncation here. Okay? But uh, you can have uh, some media which is uh, practically uh, uh, corresponds to the analog uh, harmonic potential. Okay? All right. Then, uh, but okay, we, we don't want to work inside a waveguide. Then uh, uh, we have to deal with uh, free propagation and some operations to try to produce these beams, which are uh, equivalent to the solutions, uh, the eigenmodes uh, of the quantum harmonic oscillator. And um, you want to, to make them like a, a, free a free evolution of the harmonic oscillator uh, and other interactions of, of the harmonic oscillator. So what we do, for instance, uh, we have a kind of toolbox using um, spatial light modulators. For instance, you can send uh, the zero order Gaussian mode, which is uh, like this laser beam. This is a zero order Gaussian mode into a, a mask written in the spatial light modulator. Looks like this. And then we'll produce, uh, well, at least um, it depends on the resolution of the device, but uh, it will produce in principle, any of the Laguerre Gaussian modes, the equivalent of the Laguerre Gaussian modes. So uh, then we can produce light beams which look like the eigenmodes of the uh, harmonic oscillator, the quantum harmonic oscillator. And uh, when the radial mode number is zero, then the, the energy uh, is given by the orbital angular moment. The other thing that we can do is to uh, raise and lower the orbital angular moment is, is more or less the same, the same kind of mask that you apply to a mode. And then you can increase or decrease the orbital angular moment. So we can have these operators here. The other thing that we can do is to implement uh, free evolutions. Free evolutions, in this case, is different from free propagation. Free propagation, when, when you have free propagation, you have a constant index of refraction. But uh, free propagation in, in a waveguide, in a square law waveguide, uh, is different, is a different stuff. But we can do kind of stroboscopic evolution. So we take the beam in this plane here, and then we have the, in the output, in the other plane, 
the evolved beam, and we can control the equivalent of the time evolution. And this is uh, realized by what we call uh, fraction, optical fractional Fourier transform. And uh, this operation here, the eigenmodes, the Laguerre Gaussian modes, the, the solutions of the paraxial equation, are eigenmodes of this operator. And, um, and the eigenvalue is a phase which is proportional to the energy. Yeah, then, uh, then you see that, uh, for instance, realizing this free evolution here, we can have information about the energy of the mode without measuring uh, di directly the, the energy of the, of the beam. So then this is a uh, free evolution. And we can also realize things like uh, squeezing and displacement. For instance, uh, squeezing is something like this. You open and you close the potential. And you can uh, add, you change the, the relative uh, position uh, of the energy level. So this would, would, would simply correspond to expanding the beam and uh, displacing physically the beam. So this expansion, this is because uh, each family of solutions of Gaussian beams, they have a, a proper waist, which is related to this, uh, to this um, uh, radius, to this diameter here. So and when you, when you change the waist of the beams, you change the family of solutions. And then, uh, for instance, uh, this solution here, if we want to express in the other uh, family of solutions, we would need to make an expansion, okay? So we can uh, realize these things here. And also, we can measure the orbital angular momentum, which is equivalent to energy projections. So that's uh, what we have. There are at least two methods to doing this. One method is using the, the mode sorter. This is a device with uh, refractive uh, uh, plates here, in which, for instance, if we have an input, which is a superposition of two modes with different orbital angular uh, momentum. Uh, at the output, each one will appear in a plane here in different positions corresponding to the orbital angular moment. This is the mode sorter. And uh, we can also do a different stuff. You can send it to a spatial light modulator, and we can apply this uh, raising and lowering operators until we get a zero order mode. When we get the zero order mode, we couple to a, 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 a single mode optical fiber and, and detect it. So by making a scan in uh, raising and lowering, we can identify what was the input mode here, what was the orbital angular moment. This is another method. OK, then uh, at first, we, we were interested in um, doing something related to quantum thermodynamics. And then uh, we try to realize uh, measurements to, um, to measure the work distribution to put here, for instance, in the uh, uh, Jarzinski uh, fluctuation relation. So our, our first uh, attempt was, our first idea was inspired in the work by the guys in CBPF. Uh, we have here, lots of them here, uh, Roberto, Mauro, uh, Serra, so uh, Alexandre. So they, they found that uh, that's it's possible to measure the work distribution, not only me uh, making uh, this uh, two measurement uh, protocol, not making uh, directly uh, projections on the energy, but measuring the characteristic function. So it's possible to do the same thing optically. You, you must have this interferometer here, which is uh, practically complicated. You have to realize some uh, fractional Fourier transforms here and there, and uh, it must be balanced. So we didn't do this in practice, but uh, we analyzed this setup, and we showed that, in principle, it could work, and uh, it would result in uh, work distributions like this. Okay. So our next step was trying to measure directly the making projections uh, in the energy, which, which means measuring directly the orbital angular moment. Then uh, we did this work in which uh, what we, we wanted to measure is the work distribution. And in, in order to measure this, uh, in order to, to measure this, uh, this thing here, to calculate this average, we need to know the transition probabilities here, right? From uh, one energy to the other, which in our case is uh, pro 
transitions from one orbital angular moment to the other. Okay? And then um, we can put here and calculate this, uh, this, this average here. Right? Uh, how do we do this? We, um, for instance, we can have, um, uh, we can prepare each one of the uh, eigen energy, eigen uh, modes, which are Laguerre Gaussian modes. We can apply some process. This thing can be done with the SLM as well, the spatial lot modulator. And then this thing um, will become eventually, if this thing is unitary, you end up with the superposition of Laguerre Gaussian modes. And then we measure here. And we measure, for instance, the intensity of each one here. And then we can see the probability of uh, transition from this to each one of these output modes. I think it's relatively simple. Uh, conceptually simple, but in practice there are some, some issues, there's always problems. And, uh, but the first thing was uh, preparing each one of the, of the modes, just to send it to the SLM. And uh, second, the process implemented in another SLM, uh, I represented here if it was a transmission, but it could be a reflection as well, etc. And then we eventually end up with a superposition. And then uh, we need to make the final projection. And then in this work, you use the mode sorter, which uh, ideally would be uh, very nice, because if we have, for instance, superposition of this and this mode, in the output, I would see a, an intense spot here, like L equal to plus 5, and here L equal to minus 2. But the problem is that the mode sorter does not have this very good resolution as, as I represented here. This was a, a limitation for us. But anyway, these are uh, our measurement results. For instance, these black uh, curves here are calibration curves. For instance, if I send uh, uh, L equal to zero, I will get this peak here in the measurement uh, plane. If I send L equal to plus five and minus five, I'll have the, the other peaks here. But then if I send, for instance, uh, L equal to zero through a turbulent mask, which implements some kind of process, it would be nice to study uh, the thermodynamics of a turbulent process. And then if we send, we have this thing as a result. And then I, I need to know what's the, uh, what's the, the weight of each one of these uh, peaks here while uh, having this output. But uh, because we don't have a uh, bigger resolution, you see that there is a considerable overlap between adjacent peaks, then uh, we cannot decompose this, uh, this result here in the base of orbital angular moment uniquely. So then uh, we were restricted to more simple uh, processes. And then we, we realized a very simple process, which is uh, applying raising and lowering operator in, in a superposition. So for instance, if we send L equal to zero, we end up with this L plus 5 and minus 5. And then uh, we do this. Uh, of course, we need, uh, for instance, we, we prepare a thermal state in the beginning, uh, in which, in fact, we, we, we it's, it's much better prepare each mode at a, at a time instead of preparing the thermal state and then making projections because uh, the higher order mode will have low uh, probability. Then we prepare each one, apply the process, and then we want to see uh, what are the, the, the transmission probabilities. But of course, we need to truncate our distribution because uh, it's very hard to go to very high orbital angular momentum. And we can think that we have some relatively uh, lower temperature so that we, we only have uh, very probably uh, low uh, orbital angular momentum components. And uh, this, this is the measurement results. This is the, the theoretical prediction. And then uh, the intensity here gives us the uh, probability transitions from uh, one momentum to the other. And then we can plot this quantity here of this Rasinski uh, fluctuation relation. And uh, we can vary uh, the inverse temperature beta because uh, we can only, uh, we can apply uh, weights given by, a give by, a, by a some de temperature for the input distribution. And uh, given the probability transitions, you can calculate that. And we see that uh, in practice, we will have uh, 
lower value than, than 1, it should be 1, but because of noise, uh, classical noise, and then uh, we have this, uh, this thing here, it, and this shaded area is the uh, error bar for our measurements. We can also uh, kind of emulate a, a Maxwell's demo with the results. It's not I realizing in practice, but taking the data and uh, calculating uh, this uh, quantity by uh, considering an action which is selective in terms of the sign of the orbital momentum. And then we would have this thing here, bigger than one. And, uh, and this, this region here is the region with very high temperature where the, the high orbital angular momentum components would contribute. And because of our truncation, this region is, is not good. But uh, for instance, from here, there, um, our results are, are, are good. OK, what's our next step? Is a setup with the same idea, uh, orbital angular momentum modes, but using entangled photons. So what can we do? This is um, a laser pumping a crystal. And then we have a parametric down conversion. Uh, don't have time to explain in detail, but uh, we have uh, two photons here, which are entangled in several degrees of freedom, in particular in, in the orbital angular momentum. This means that uh, if I pump here with L equal to zero, then I can have here, uh, we'll have here an entangled state, which is a superposition of uh, uh, zero, zero, plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, and so on. Have all these components. And uh, with an SLM here, I can modulate this guy here and prepare uh, several values of L. And I can use uh, spatial light modulators here to uh, perform measurements using that method by coupling a, an optical fiber. So I can make projections in the orbital angular momentum here. Then we can do, uh, I think we can do many things. First thing um, we want to do, we, 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 we are doing now. Um, so this, this work is, is being done by the students Thomas and Guilherme, and also Rafael and, and Lucas from the University of uh, Goiás. Uh, are also uh, collaborating. And the first thing we did was uh, the remote state preparation of a thermal state. So this is based on the measurement here, which realizes the trace of over the orbital angular moment. If we trace over L here, then we have a thermal distribution here. Why we have a, a thermal distribution? This is because it was calculated by uh, Torres, uh, Alexandre Andresco and uh, Luis Torner, that the angular, orbital angular moment spectrum of the uh, signal and idler uh, photons is, is given by this, this type of curves here. They, they didn't uh, think about uh, thermodynamics at that time, but you see that this is uh, exponential decays. Okay? And then when I make uh, projections here, make the trace here, I will end up with a single photon here, which is, uh, is in a mixed state because I, I made the trace in a mixed state. And uh, the weights of uh, each orbital angular momentum mode is given by this, this, this distribution here. So I just got these results uh, last Friday. And uh, the boys uh, in the lab measured, given, uh, have given me these curves. And uh, this is something like this. We fit this distribution with uh, exponentials. And then uh, we, we have this parameter, beta over h, uh, h bar omega. And uh, the difference between this one, this colder and this hotter distribution, is, uh, is given by the waste of the pump beam. So I can prepare remotely the thermal states here, and I can control the temperature of the modes there. And uh, one, one thing nice about the remote state preparation is that you don't need to uh, perform projective uh, measurements. If, I, if I, uh, I, I don't make the trace, if I select one of the modes here, then I will select one of these peaks here. Okay, then I, I can prepare the whole family of states uh, indirectly here by performing projections and using the entanglement. So these are preliminary results. We have also tried to implement a process which is a, a turbulent process. And then uh, we tried two, two uh, turbulence masks. And the uh, first one 
given these things here, a slight distribution, it's not a strong turbulence. And uh, we see that it changes uh, a little bit. And there is the, the other distribution, you see that the weights of the distribution change a little bit more. And uh, of course, it's still, um, okay, it is still look like an exponential because you have uh, several types of, of transitions because we sent all of the thermal distribution to the process. Okay, so we are working on this thing here. Uh, if you like, please come and uh, give suggestions. What uh, kind of things, ni nice things that we can do. Uh, this is how the experimental setup looks like, and uh, this is what we we would like to to do: uh, remote state preparation, including delayed choice. Because, uh, for instance, we can delay this projection here by a long, uh, not, not, a, not an optical fiber, but uh, uh, making a delay line, optical delay line here, so that you can apply the process first and then prepare the input state later. So that uh, would be nice. To so you, you have a, a delayed um, generation of entropy, for instance. And... Uh, so we can control uh, many parameters, like the free energy, which depends on, on, on the shape of the mode. Uh, we can implement uh, Maxwell's demos strat strategies, study turbulent and chaotic process. I think it's, it's interesting to, to see what happens. You know, uh, for instance, some kinds of turbulence is very hard to calculate, uh, uh, even in a computer. So maybe it's interesting to, to study this uh, complicated process or chaotic or turbulent, uh, experimentally. That's uh, one thing that we are trying to, to sell as a, as a utility of our system. And uh, there's one discussion. Uh, I would like to claim that uh, there is some uh, energy cost for changing, for increasing the, the orbital angular momentum. And there is a, an energy gain when you decrease the orbital angular momentum. But it's not h bar omega. That's why this discussion is tricky. But uh, I, think, I think there is a real a, an energy. It's not, it's not simulation uh, of, the, of, the, of the process. It's a real an energy transfer, real work being done. And, uh, and this depends on, on the spatial properties of these of this guys here. But uh, this is a, it's still a discussion. OK, I will skip this thing. And conclusions, more or less what uh, I have already said. And um, we are thinking about strategies of uh, how including quantum entanglement besides the remote state preparation to see uh, if there is some influence, is something interesting and new that will appear in this uh, thermodynamic uh, scenario. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Paolo. We have time for a couple of questions.